Welcome back everyone. Today we're talking about the pumping lemma for regular expressions. What is it? Well, let's find out. In previous video, we said that regular languages are expressed just like CFG with uh, terminals, non-terminals and production rules. And in particular, the production rules have this form where you have a non-terminal on the left and then a sequence of terminals followed by an optional non-terminal. We also said that regular languages were matchable using a deterministic finite automaton, a DFA. And that's the simplest automaton that you can use to match a regular language. It's the automaton where you only have simple, unambiguous character or token transitions. So regular language can, of course, express repetition and optionality. What they can't express is nesting. And the example we gave before is this one. And this is basically the language of recursively nested parentheses. So every opening parenthesis has to be matched with a corresponding closing parenthesis. So the question that will guide us today is how to know if a language is regular and how to prove it or how to disprove it. To prove it, it's actually fairly simple. You just build the grammar. If you manage to build a grammar that matches the language, then you've proven that it is regular. To disprove it, however, we can use the pumping lemma. So let's take a broader look at central recursion. So if we take our example here, this is central recursion because the recursion is in the center. So it's not at the start or at the end of the production rule. Other way to write this grammar is to write it like this. So opening parenthesis k times and closing parenthesis k times. That's for every k bigger or equal to one. So the sentence has one opening parenthesis and one closing parenthesis is in the language. The sentence that has two opening and two closing is also in the language, etc. So language with central recursion are never regular because, well, essentially that's against the rule of regular languages. And as an anecdote, historically, this is why C does not have nested comments. So you cannot actually write this in C or in Java for that matter. And that's quite unfortunate. I actually don't understand why they didn't change that. This bullet point is kind of useless. It just tells you that basically central recursion is against the rule. But another way to look at this is to think that regular languages must be matchable by a DFA. And a DFA has only one piece of state, or you could say only one piece of memory, and that's the current state it is in. To match central recursion, you would need an extra counter for the depth of recursion. Okay, so in this example, that will mean counting k. So how many opening parentheses have I seen so that I may match as many closing parentheses? So like we said, we can prove that language is not regular by using the pumping lemma. So here is the pumping lemma. If L is a regular language, then there exists an integer p greater or equal to 1, and p is specific to L, such that every sentence s in L of length greater or equal to p can be written as follows as x, y, z, such that the following conditions are satisfied. x, y, and z are strings of symbols. The length of y should be greater or equal to 1. The length of x, y should be smaller or equal to p. And for all n, basically repeating y should lead to a new sentence that is also part of the language. So basically, if you decompose a sentence in three parts, and you repeat the middle part, right? That should also be part of the language. Now that's quite a handful, so we're going to decompose that. But first, let me show in two sentences what the pumping lemma really means. Here's what it means. Every long enough string in language can be used to generate longer strings, and the way we do that is through a repeating part. Here's the first thing I want to emphasize. The string has to be long enough, and how do we define that? By saying that there is a parameter p bigger than 1, and p is specific to l. The lemma or rather the decomposition proposed in the lemma only applies to sentences that are longer than p. We also have this condition here. We'll come back to that later to explain why this condition is actually necessary. Notice that this is the only place where p actually appears once it's defined. So the other thing I want to emphasize is that y is the repeating part. Uh, I think if I've explained that before. So here's the corollary. So the pumping lemma, every long enough string language can be used to generate longer strings to a repeating part. The corollary, every long enough string can be decomposed into a prefix, a suffix, and a repeating part. Let's apply the pumping lemma, and we'll apply it to prove that the language 
that we saw before, and we're going to call it L, so it's the language of opening and closing parentheses, let's prove that that is not regular. And the way we're going to prove that is by contradiction. So we are going to assume that L is regular, and we will show that that leads to a contradiction. So if we assume that L is regular, then we can pick a P that satisfies the pumping lemma. And we don't have to define P, we just say that if L is regular, then P exists. So then we'll take a string that is long enough. And remember that long enough means that it's bigger than P. And we are going to choose this string. So P repetition of the opening parentheses and P repetition of the closing parentheses. Remember that P is the minimum length. So here we are at twice the length. This is OK. And remember that further we decompose that in X, Y, and Z. So let's talk about that decomposition, actually. X and Y have to be made only of opening parentheses because we have this condition that says that x and y, the length of both of this string together, is smaller than p, so they are necessarily opening parentheses. By definition, the size of y is bigger than 1, so it is not empty. Putting these two things together, we know that y is one or more opening parentheses. So now, if we repeat y, and according to the lemma we can do that, and it should be part of the language, so we actually know what this is, right? Because we know that y only contains opening parentheses, and we know that x, y, z is p opening parentheses and p closing parentheses. Well, now we have p plus the length of y opening parentheses and p closing parentheses. This is not balanced. Suddenly, there, there's an imbalance by the size of y, and we have that much more opening parentheses. So the parents are unbalanced. And this is a contradiction. So it is not possible that our language is regular because that leads to a contradiction. Here is a simple question. Does the pumping lemma work also in simple cases? So if you have this very simple language, A or B or C, that's obviously a regular language, but does the pumping lemma work? The answer obviously is yes. And the way you make it work is that you just pick a big enough P so that it is bigger than all the strings or the sentences in the language. And in fact, all finite language are regular. And the way you can show that is that they can just be expressed as a choice between sequences of characters or tokens. So you can just literally write the grammar as an enumeration of every possible valid sentence. And that's a regular grammar. I said we would explain this condition. Why do we need it? For me, this is the least intuitive part of the pumping lemma. And what I want to do in particular is what if we just omit that part? What happens? So that's the experiment here. Without the long enough condition, what happens? Well, if we omit this condition, then this language is the same language as before. It just has a repetition of at least one A in the middle. And this language is also not regular because it has the nested parentheses. It must be expressed through central recursion. But if we omit the long enough close, then we could prove that this language is regular, which is obviously false. And the way we do this is to pick y to be equal to a. So if we pick uh, as input this, so p opening, p closing, we just take y equal to a. And we can do that because there's no longer a restriction than x and y is smaller or equal to p, right? What we have here. The intuition is that the DFA that matches the regular expression only has one piece of state, right? The, the current state. And because of this, the depth of recursion must always be bounded. And if you omit the constraint, we are not able to build a maximum depth counterexample, which is what we did with our example when we actually did the proof. And, and a key part was that we were able to prove that y was an opening parent because of this condition. In the end, if you don't get this, uh, it's not an issue. But what it boils down to is that if you omit this condition, then the pumping lemma is no longer true. And if you have it, it is true. Uh, and you could show that by proving the pumping lemma, etc. This is not this kind of course, so we're not going to do that. Just know that this condition is quite important. Something else I want to draw your attention to is errors of logic. So the pumping lemma is formulated as if L is a regular language, then uh, and then the rest of it. And this is basically A implies B, okay? A being L is a regular language. Now, we know from logic that 
A implies B is not the same as B implies A. These two things do not entail each other. And so the ability to pump sentences, so to make bigger and bigger sentences that are still part of the language, does not imply regularity, the fact that a language is regular. However, we do know from logic as well that A implies B does entail that not B implies not A. And that is to say, if a language cannot be pumped, it cannot be regular. And this is the property that we use in the proof. We show that a language cannot be pumped, therefore it cannot be regular. Another way to say all of this is that pumping is a necessary but not sufficient condition for regularity in languages. Now, you'll be thrilled to know that there's also a pumping lemma for context few grammars. I'm not going to go through the whole process again, but I just want to show you what it looks like. And the idea is that this time, instead of splitting the string in three parts, we split it in five parts from V to Z. And we repeat the W and the Y. So here, repeat W, repeat Y. And so this middle part doesn't change. So this time, the uh, nested parentheses language works. And you can make it work by picking W to be the opening parentheses and Y to be the closing parentheses. A language that doesn't work, and you can use the pumping lemma for CFGs to prove that it doesn't work, is the language of equal sized repetition of A, B, and Cs. Now, you'll remember that CFG are recognized by a non-deterministic pushdown automaton. A non-deterministic pushdown automaton is like a non-deterministic finite automaton, but extended with a stack on which you can push value and you can look on value on the stack to make decisions. And precisely, the stack is the extra state that allows counting the depth of recursion. So there's a link there that I think is very cool. But actually, you can use the pumping lemma in other situations as well. And the pattern for situations where you can make a pumping lemma is the following. You want to have x, a set of sets. And in our example, x is regular languages, right? Regular languages is a class of language, which is basically a set of languages. And languages themselves are a set of sentences. You also want to be in a situation where uh, an infinite set of objects, and so in our example, the infinite set is the language, and the object are sentences. So infinite set of objects in the class that we're considering, so x, you want these infinite sets to only be obtained by making long objects by repeating some sub-elements from the shorter objects. So in regular language, we make longer sentences by repeating the middle part of uh, shorter sentences. If these two conditions are satisfied, if, if that's the situation that you are in, then you're able to use a pumping lemma to disprove that a set belongs to X, the class of things you're interested in. This is a bit abstract, but I just want to show you that the pumping lemma is not just something hyper-specific to language theory. It's something that can be used for proofs in other domains of mathematics. And that's it for this video. Next time we'll talk about L parsing, which is a way to parse some CFG grammars. Enjoy your life and take care.